Who's ready for some good Bible study right now? Amen. You have got to hear my sermon from last night. It was a divine revelation from the Father concerning the two witnesses. Now, I've taught on the two witnesses previously. This is an additional revelation that we received last night. And it, it'll be uploaded on my Rumble channel in about an hour after this is over today. Make sure you listen to part two of the two witnesses. You've got to hear it. Trust me when I tell you that. I don't just say that to say that. All right, brothers and sisters. Today, I want to, I want to take you on a journey, and I want to help you understand, is, is Brother Quentin here? Brother Quentin was supposed to join us today. Let me look. Yeah. I don't know if he, is he here? Quentin's, okay, Brother, yeah. I want to welcome Brother Quentin. He is a minister uh, that God has been drawing more and more into this light, into this truth. And I see you, Denisha Down, such a faithful part of our ministry. We love you, darling. Your, your sweet words always encourage me. And so, Brother Quentin, we have many ministers. I had another minister email me from somewhere, and uh, he said they were bringing 80 people to our Passover event from their church. So this message is really growing, and it's reaching uh, the far distant regions, and Today, I want to try to give you that are joining First Harvest Ministries that are part of what we're doing an overview. I want to break down to you what we believe, and I want you to see the big picture. If you're not careful, we you know, the conservatives are very good at going in what I call rabbit holes, okay? We may have election fraud, but they'll pick one little rabbit hole, maybe it's Dominion Software, and get lost in that instead of seeing the big picture, that it was fraud on every level, not just that one rabbit hole. Well, when you come to this message of truth and you see the light and Yahweh calls you into the two witness ministry and you hear the seventh angel sounding, if you're not careful, you'll find your little rabbit hole because many people think that our rabbit hole is the Sabbath day. That's what that, no, that's not our message. Our rabbit hole is not the holy days. That's not our message. I want to bring you back today to the big picture. I want to show you what makes this ministry different. What makes our message different. And I want you to be balanced in all areas because if you're not careful, a religious spirit can come on you and you can make this message very harmful rather than helpful. So today we are going to start our journey in the book of first Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 35. Now, before we read that, let me preface it by saying, I'm going to give every one of you a, 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 job, a homework assignment. This week, I would like for you to find five Christians. I mean, people that you trust, people that you know are genuinely Bible-believing Christians. And I want you to ask them one question. Here's the question. When we resurrect from the graves, what will we be doing in the millennium reign? I want you to ask five Christians that this week. And I don't want you to ask them that as a got you question. I want it to be sincere. 
and you are going to be shocked when you come back here next Sabbath day at the dumb looks you get when you ask that question. Now, I'm not being ugly. Dumb is not a bad word. It just means they're dumb. Now, ignorance is not a bad word unless you choose to remain ignorant. Our ministry reveals to you what the purpose of your salvation is. Oh, I see your, is that your grandson, Sister Denise? Oh, daughter, granddaughter, how beautiful. Now, if you do not know about the millennial reign of Christ, you, you know nothing. And, and look, y'all know I talk sharp, so I, I'm not going to apologize every time I do it. If you know not about the coming kingdom of God to planet Earth, you know nothing. You don't even know why you are saved. Well, you're not saved yet, but anyway, I'll do that on another subject. You don't even know why you've been converted. You don't know why you've accepted Christ. 99% of you in this room, I want you to raise your hands. I'm going to put it on my gallery view so I can see the hands. How many of you got saved initially for a free ticket to heaven? Let me see your hand. Amen. Thank you. There you go. And yet, not one of you is going to heaven. Ain't that something? <laughs> I mean, seriously, folks, I'm going to tell you what this ministry is about. Every one of you got saved to go to heaven. And ain't one of you going. Let me watch them numbers, see if they drop or fall right there. So if you buy a car and the purpose of buying that car is you want it to fly and all it does is roll, you're going to get mighty discouraged with that car. Well, when you come to Christ expecting just to receive Christ and then you're going to live and die and go to heaven, you're going to get discouraged when you come to Christ and you start going through the hardest hell you've ever been through in your life. When all of a sudden, everything in your life, you're being tested on every hand. And you said, look, I didn't sign up for this. I just signed up to go to heaven. You're going to have discouragement with Christ. If you believe the television ministers, it's not God's will for you to suffer in any way. If you listen to uh, 50, uh, 50 cents, older brother. <laughs> Y'all know who 50 cents older brother is, don't you? <laughs> it's Creflo Dollar. <laughs> but anyway, I love him, but I heard him say the other day, that God never sends trouble to the believer. Well, that's a lie. That's a lie. And I hate to call, but that's a lie. But yet this is what the church is being taught. Get saved, go to heaven. So this ministry, God has raised us up to say, hey, you didn't get saved to go to heaven. If you did, then let's all meet up at First Harvest Ministries. Let's, let's go out to the wilderness. Let's do it like a real cult. And let's give everybody some Kool-Aid. And we'll go on to heaven. I mean, if that's why you're saved, if you just want to go to heaven, then let's get you there. But God didn't save you to go to heaven. God saved you to change you. Now, what I just told you is a quote that you need to remember for the rest of your life. 
The purpose of your salvation is to change you from Denise Resor to a daughter of Yahweh, to a creature that looks so much like the Father that you can say like Jesus said. When they said, show us the Father, he said, what? Do you not see the Father in me? When you've seen me, you have seen the Father. That's what people should say about you. When I saw Ginger, I saw the Father. When I saw Dot, I see the Father. Why? She loves her enemies like the Father. She gives mercy and grace that is beyond human ability. This is your goal in this life. Because God has a job for you to do. You're not retiring. You're going to work. You're going to work in the millennial reign. Now, those five Christians, I want you to report back to me the kind of answers that you received. All right, Sister Rosie, let's read now. Thank God for 123 students in our class this morning. We're reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 35. And while she's looking that scripture up, I'll give a thousand dollars to anyone in this class right now, even you demons that snuck in here somehow. I'll cash app it, PayPal it, Venmo it, let go of it, whatever you want to do. For one scripture in Yahweh's holy word in proper context that says anyone is going to heaven. I'll give the money right now. You can raise your hand and we'll even answer. All right. Go ahead, sister, when you get ready. But some may say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Read. How foolish. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. In what you sow, you do not sow the future body, but a bare grain, whether of wheat or of some other grain. Now Yahweh, give, now Yahweh gives it a body just as he pleases into each of the seed. He gives its own body. All right. Now I want to stop here and talk about the new body that we're going to get in the resurrection. Now that is the promised land. The, the, the promised land is your promised new body. Right now, you live in an old tabernacle. That's why we keep the Feast of Tabernacles every year, to remind us that we are living in an old, broken tabernacle. But we have a new body, which is our mansion. Okay? There's no mansions in heaven. I don't know whoever came up with that uh, bunch of junk. There's no mansions in heaven. You are the mansions in heaven. Your new body is your new mansion. Now, I see some of your faces right now saying, I know he didn't just say that. When the Bible says that uh, in my father's house are many mansions, no, the Bible does not say that. Your Queen James Version says that. I call him Queen James because he was a homosexual. All right. <laughs> I love when people look at me like that. <laughs> You can go Google it. Was King James a homosexual? Just Google it. Okay. All right. Anything I say to you, I promise you, I can back it up. Now, so when you get the new body, why is Yahweh giving you a new body? Now, Paul spends a whole chapter in 1 Corinthians asking or answering questions about the new body. Number one, you're going to need a new body for the work that Yahweh has planned for you to do. In the resurrection, 
You do not become a ghost. There's a lie out there. It comes from Greek mythology that when you die, that you turn into like Patrick Swayze on the movie Ghost, that you become this ethereal, unseeable spirit. You've got to get all that Greek mentality out of your head. You need a Hebrew mentality. You do not become invisible when you resurrect. You do not become this uh, uh, untouchable, unseeable phantasm. It's all lies. Yahweh has brought you to this ministry to deliver you from the lies. And God's word will deliver you from those lies. So the Apostle Paul answers the question of what kind of body you're coming up from the grave in. Now, here's a question I have for all of you. According to Paul, now your church may teach different. I'm just telling you what Paul taught. According to Paul, you do not get your new body until the what? Uh, let me ask somebody, uh, unmute Sister Ginger for me. Sister Ginger, according to Paul, at what time do you get the new body? I don't know. Okay, I love that answer. That's why you're here. Amen. Sister, uh, let me call on somebody else. Sister Sandra Brawlier, when do you get the new body? At the resurrection. Amen. Now, here's my question to all of you. If you are going to heaven when you die, before the resurrection, because the resurrection takes place on the seventh day, if you are going to heaven, what body are you going in? Because according to Paul, you don't get a new body until the resurrection. So what, what are you floating around heaven in? Now, these are questions you got to answer. I'll deliver you from the lies if you'll let me. When they tell you that you're going to heaven or hell when you die, they lied to you. Show me one scripture. One. It's not in God's word. Trust me, I've checked from front to back, top to bottom. It ain't in there. You will go to sleep when you die. Just like you do every night. Have you ever thought, why do we need to go to sleep every night? Why can't we just stay awake? You're practicing every day for the resurrection. How many knows when you go to sleep at night, it ain't but a moment later and you're back awake? Why? Because the dead know nothing. The sleeper knows nothing. You're going to die and the next second you'll be in the presence of the Lord. But it, it may be a, a hundred years, a thousand, who knows? But to you, it'll be the next second after you close your eyes. You'll wake back up in the resurrection. Now, why do I focus so much on this subject? Because if you don't get this subject right, you'll get everything else wrong. So Paul is talking about the new body. You get it at the resurrection. What's that body going to be like? It's going to be just like the body you're in right now. Except it will be divine. It will not need blood. It will be flesh. But it will not be flesh and. Let me look at your lips. Talk back to me. Blood. The body you're in right now is made in the image of who? Yahweh, why would he get rid of the body that's made in his image? 
The Bible says in the resurrection, you will know one another as you always knew them. You're not coming up as a, as a new ghost family, sneaking around, haunting everybody. <laughs> You're not, you know, somebody told me, well, my, don't, you can't tell me, Brother Vaughn, I know my mama's watching over me. Well, what about when you're having relations with your wife? Is your mama still watching you? What about when you're at, on the toilet in the morning? Is your mama watching you? Come on, people. I'm trying to get you awake. You're not guarded by your loved ones. You're guarded by the angels of Yahweh. Your loved ones are at rest, thank God. Who would want their loved ones to have to see the hell that you're going through and they can't do nothing about it? How is that resting in peace? Everybody that dies, we say rest in peace and then we say they're watching over us. Well, are they resting or watching? I hope I'm helping some of you. To understand God's got a new body waiting for you. And Paul describes that that body. Let's keep reading. Verse 39. All flesh is not the same. Men have one flesh. Beasts another flesh. Fish another. And birds another. There are also heavenly bodies. And there are earthly bodies. But the glory of heavenly bodies is one kind. And the glory of earthly bodies is another. The sun has one glory, the moon another, and the stars another. And stars differ from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. Let's pause it's right there. Did you hear what he said? All flesh is not the same. But yet it is still all what? Flesh. Your new body will be a flesh body. It will be just like the resurrected body of Yahshua. When Yahshua was resurrected, was he invisible? No. The Bible said he walked around and ate fish with his disciples in the resurrected body. Then he went to his father and was glorified. That flesh received glorification and he came back to earth. And now all of a sudden that flesh body could still be what? Touched. What did he tell Thomas? What did he tell Thomas in the resurrected body? Touch me. He wasn't invisible. Touch me. And he ate food with them. The new body will have a new glory, but it will be, for example, Paul said, you sow it in corruption, but it comes up, not a different body. That body comes up. Hallelujah. In glory. It, there is something added to it. Eternal life is added to that flesh body and the need for blood, oxygen. You'll no longer need to breathe oxygen. It will be a divine body. And I hate to simplify it too much. But if you'll watch the movie Superman, which I believe is divinely inspired by God. Superman's father was Jalel, which is Hebrew, Hebrew for Yahweh. It's the same connotation. And then the father sends his son to planet Earth to save humanity. And that son looks just like us. But he's what? Not like us. Why? He don't need what? Blood. You remember when Superman, when he would cut his finger, 
He would hide it from Lois Lane because it wouldn't what? It wouldn't bleed. He didn't, he didn't need blood. He didn't need oxygen. How do you think he could fly through outer space? He didn't need. Uh, now, I know I may be simplifying this way too much. But I'm trying to help you understand your new body has a purpose in the kingdom of God. That new body will be divine. There will be no more sickness in it. Anything that if you will be in your new body as healthy as you were in your early 30s, you will be completely healthy. There will be no cells broken down. You will walk in the greatest health. You will walk in perfection. That means before I gained all this weight. Amen. You will be in that healthy state. Your hair will be the color it's supposed to be instead of what it's becoming. Amen. Because Claire all will be out of business in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Because your body is your mansion. You're going to live in it for all eternity. And you will travel at the speed of thought. When God says, I need you in China, you will be in China. You will think it and you will be there in that body. Now, what is the purpose of the new body? Because the government of Yahshua will be a super government. Made up of these resurrected sons that are training for reigning right now and schooling for ruling right now. Are there any questions about what I've said so far? Brother Eric Blackman, let's unmute Brother Eric. I know we can trust Eric. Unless someone's taken over his account. <laughs> unmute yourself. I'm, Brother I'm Eric. here. I'm here. I'm just, I'm really sick. God bless you. We'll pray for you, Brother Eric. Thank you. What 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 do you what was your question? Oh, you had your hand raised. Oh, is, oh, that was from a long time ago. Oh, I don't okay. I'm, I'm so sorry. sorry. Everybody make sure you say a prayer for Brother Eric Blackman. Is it COVID, Brother Eric? Yes. Okay. And my mother has it, and I'm really concerned for my okay. dad because he has uh, some significant health injuries. And he only has one, or medical history, and he only has one working lung. So My I'm word. looking to get some ivermectin prophylactically. I'm, I'm not taking anything. I'm not vaccinated, you know. You're right. I don't know the whole other story, but. Well, you, um, you've got a 99% chance to survive, but we're going to pray for that 1%. Exactly. If I okay. do nothing. Amen. So everybody write the Blackman family down on your prayer list right now. They need a miracle, especially daddy. Amen. Brother Joseph Anikowicz, you got your hand raised. Yes. Yes, Brother Vaughn. Uh, first, I just want to say one thing about your introduction to this. Um, I wrote a song called I've Had a Change of Mind. I'm going to follow Yeshua. That was years ago, and it's based on the word teshuva in Hebrew, which means to really have a change of mind and turn had turned back towards God, which is what us our, our going towards being saved is all about. But I, I have a question about Shemayim, high Shemayim, the heavens. So when it says the heavens and the, our heavenly body, does that mean that when we reign with Yahshua on the earth in the millennial reign, we'll have our heavenly body? Will the Hashemayim come down to earth? Will it be yes. just yes. as you know, Yerushalayim is the opposite of ha -ha 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 Hashemayim, right? The heavens That's and then correct. Yerushalayim is, is its sister. So mm -hmm. what happens after that thousand years? So that is exactly where we're getting to. That's the next age and we're going to get there. That's a great question. Um, now, a lot of people listening may not know what you're referring to with the Hashem. Everyone, when you see the word heaven in your Bible, Nine times out of 10, it's not talking about heaven. And that's what's so confusing. When we grew up thinking about heaven, what the only thing that came to our mind was heaven. But there are three heavens. And most of the time, your Bible is talking about the second heaven, which is where the stars dwell. It's the galaxies. It's the Maseroth. It's the stars. 
So uh, the third heaven is where Yahweh, that is that dimension where he dwells. And so we have to be careful reading our Bibles. For example, that word heavenly body, when you read that word, you automatically think, oh, well, it says heaven. I understand that. It's simply a glorified body. It will have the touch of heaven up on it, which will make it a super body. Sister it, Jill, you had your hand up. Sorry. I'm sorry, Brother Shane. I, I just wanted to ask one last Go thing. Ahead. That yes, sir. When Paul, so that's when Paul says in 2 Corinthians 7, he says, I've come up to the second. I know a man who went up to the second heaven. Right. That's correct. Yep. Amen. That's right. Amen. And so we need to know those three levels of heaven. If not, when you read this Bible, you when you see the word heaven, you'll get the wrong understanding. That's why people are scared to death when I teach about the Maserat. When I teach about the stars of heaven, they get so scared. Oh, that's the Zodiac. You don't know what you're talking about. Who do you think created what the devil perverted, Yahweh, for a purpose. If you don't understand the Maserat, Virgo, Leo, if you don't understand all that, you don't even understand your Bible. Because Yahweh's first Bible was written in the stars, starting with Virgo. A virgin will have a child. The story of the Bible was first written in the stars. Before there was ever a piece of paper to write a Bible on, Yahweh wrote it. It starts with Virgo. A virgin will have a child. That's why she's holding seed in her hand. And then it ends with Leo the lion because Yahshua will start, will start with a virgin. The story ends with a returning lion of the tribe of Judah. Oh, I tell you, God is perfect. Brother John Morales. Brother John Morales, unmute yourself. Uh, okay. Uh, this is Mrs. Morales. Oh, hello, Mrs. This Morales. Mrs. Morales. I have a question. Well, we're here together, but he wants me to ask the question. The question has to do with when Jesus was on the cross and he told the one criminal that he would be with him in paradise today can you explain that with miss morales it is my pleasure to explain it you know why because Please. i have to explain it every single day of my life <laughs> okay well this is our no, first time no here, so i love it no i love it i'm letting you know that that is the go-to scripture everyone has so let me explain it real quickly Yahshua is on the cross. The criminal is beside him. Remember when the Bible was written, before it was translated, there were no apostrophes, no commas, no periods. It was written as a running scroll. All right. How many know you can change the whole meaning of a sentence by moving a comma? Okay. When you yes. read the King James Version of the Bible, here's how it reads. For I say unto you, comma, today you will be with me in paradise. All right. Number one, Yahshua did not go to his father in paradise, if you will, until eight days later. So if the criminal went to heaven that day, then he beat Jesus there. And we know John 6, 44 says that no man has gone to heaven except Jesus Christ. No man. That means the criminal. This was written 60 years after Calvary. No man has gone to heaven except the son of man, which is in heaven. That's Yahshua. So knowing those facts, knowing that Jesus didn't go to paradise, until eight days later, when he ascended to his father. So are we to believe that the criminal was the first human to ascend to the father, even before Yahshua? Well, we know better than that. So what is being said here? 
move the comma over one word. And Yahshua says, surely I tell you today. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you emphatically. I give you my word right now that you will be with me in paradise. It wasn't Big when difference. the man was going to paradise. It's when the promise was given today, right now, at this moment. Miss Morales. Okay, and a follow-up. If it's not the, very much. And the question, the next question is, what Bible do you recommend that we read then? The book of Yahweh. Okay. This is the closest one I have found. Now, it's not perfect. It's not perfect. It's the closest one I have found to the original scriptures. Now, it's hard to find. I think you, have, you can't get it from Amazon or anywhere. I think you have to get it from the house of Yahweh in Abilene, Texas on their website. But pretty much everyone here has this Bible now. Uh, so, folks, that's why it's important for you to have a teacher. Otherwise, how would you have known about the comma? How would you, you know, okay, I, surely I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Or surely I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. You see the difference? Big Amen. Difference. God, it's a thank huge you. difference. Thank you for your question. And thank you for joining us, Miss Morales. You're welcome, you and We're your happy. husband, anytime. Thank you. And Miss Jan Meadows and her beautiful mother. Community. Hello, good morning. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> Shabbat shalom. <laughs> My question is, um, since we, when we die, we'll be in the ground, in the grave. Yes, ma'am. Uh, <clears throat> which I have no problem uh, seeing that. In Hebrews 12, it talks about, you know, how um, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Yes, yes, and yes, so yes. I have a little trouble with uh, figuring okay. out what that meant. Let, let's go there. Is it Hebrews 12 or 11? <laughs> Hebrews 12, 1. Okay. Yeah. Well, it comes right after 11. Okay. Yeah. I know that's the faith chapter. Right. So let's, let's go there, shall we? That's a great question. Let's go to Hebrews 11. Now, and then let's see. All yes, right. Talking, talking about the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Let's go to <laughs> Hebrews 11 and let's go. And I tell you what, for everyone watching, verses 1 through verses 12 pretty much names uh, a lot of these heroes of the faith, Abraham, Enoch, Noah. But when we get to verse 13, notice what it says, and these all died, every one of them, even Enoch because it lists Enoch, these all died. Now, I know you are already got a million questions, but it says Enoch did not see death. Read the book of Enoch, and you'll understand what it means. I don't have time right now. So if you keep going, and you read down, when we get to verse or chapter 12, verse 1, we're being told that your life and my life is being judged by these witnesses. Okay, at the great judgment day, when everyone gets their court date, there will be a grandstand of witnesses, even at Satan's trial. Do you not know that Satan will be judged? He gets a court date at the great white throne judgment, everyone. People don't realize this. He gets a court date just like you do. We all must appear except for the 144,000. They're being judged right now, which hopefully I'll be in that number. Paul said he hoped to make that high calling, but he didn't know if he would or not. But I pray every day to live a life where I'm being judged right now by the word of God. But for everyone else, they must appear before the great white throne judgment. You will not have to appear before that great white throne judgment if you allow yourself to be judged right now, because judgment begins where? In the house of Yahweh. Amen? Now, so this cloud of witnesses is being prepared for Satan's trial. Why is this? 
Because Satan is going to make an argument, and I'm going to answer the question, but I've got to set the preface. Satan's going to make an argument at his trial that Yahweh cannot send him to eternal hell because all he did was rebel against Yahweh and every man on earth has done the same thing. What is Satan's only sin? The very one you've committed all your life, rebellion. Does You know Satan does not have a worse sin than you have? That's going to be his argument before the great judge. That nobody walked in obedience to you. So if you send me to hell, you got to send everybody. And that's when this great cloud of witnesses, Noah, Enoch, Abraham, and maybe Jan Meadows, and maybe Sandra Brawyer, Maybe Shane Vaughn will be called to the witness stand as a cloud of witnesses that will surround the whole canopy of heaven of those that walked in faithfulness. So here's what it's saying in verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside Every sin, every excuse for rebellion, which so easily entraps us and let us run the race that is set before us with endurance. In other words, it's not that these men are surrounding us because the Bible said the angels of God surround us. So eventually they gonna all run out of room who surrounds us. This great cloud is surrounding us as a witness that's ever before us of what we should be doing in our life. They are the cloud or the reminders of what God is expecting from us. Amen? Praise God. It takes me so long to explain one verse because it takes me so long to unteach everybody what we've always been taught. That's not an easy thing. Great question, Sister Jan. I hope you're in that cloud of witnesses. I hope to be in that cloud of witnesses. When Satan's saying nobody obeyed you, I hope God will point to me and said he kept my Sabbath. He kept no other gods before him. He, uh, he walked in holiness. Hallelujah. Sister Sandra Brawyer. I have a... Uh, question, I guess, and a statement Amen. concerning the verse uh, that God says we will be raised incorruptible. Okay. And I know there are those who have bodies that are uh, injured and maligned or deformed. Yes. And so uh, I want to give encouragement to those yes. with that word incorruptible, if you will explain that. Hear anything that corrupted you. In my case, I'll tell you, I, I, my weight is a corruption in, against my body, and I know that. Um, I have an inner ear infection. I've had it for 25 years. That's why I'm deaf in that left ear. My body is what? Corrupted. Every one of you watching me, you have corruption in your body, okay? Whether it's deformity, uh, maybe it's a mental corruption, retardation. I say that word with utmost respect. Whatever it is, that's corruption. What created your body to begin with? DNA. If you want a fascinating study on the proof of God, that there is a God, study DNA. It is riveting. It is a computer code that someone literally has to program. It's about that long, your DNA strand. And in that code is your body. That DNA created you. It was in the sperma of your father. That DNA said your eye color, your hair color, your personality, everything's in that DNA. Now, when you die, Everything about you will die except 
for your DNA. DNA never dies. Go study it. It's eternal. So brothers and sisters, do you know what causes DNA to come to life? Do you know what causes DNA to produce what's written in the code? I don't want to sound too new agey here, but it's frequency. Okay? <laughs> Everything on earth is a frequency. Hallelujah. Woo! It took frequency. As long as I see Sandra out there, amen in me, I know I'm right. Hallelujah. When that frequency rivets that, it, it gives it the spark of life. Well, brothers and sisters, there's going to be a sound that's so loud on the resurrection morning. Wherever your DNA is, at the bottom of an ocean or in a crematory, you can't burn up DNA. Maybe it's in the bottom of a grave. There's going to be a frequency that runs through this earth that's going to ignite that new body without corruption. And that same DNA that created you the first time is going to recreate you in the same image, but with a heavenly touch, a divine glory that's already written into that code. Hallelujah. Woo! Y'all getting me worked up now. Hallelujah. The word of God turns me on, honey. I love God's word because it's perfect. From front to back. My Mississippi grandfather said it's perfect from kiver to kiver. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Sister Ginger, go right ahead. Unmute yourself, darling. Um, when we sleep, we dream. So when we die and we sleep, is there any possibility that we are together in heaven with the Lord in a dreamlike state until we're resurrected? That is a great question. And the answer, may I recommend to our new students to please go watch my teaching, What Happens to the Dead? Because every one of these questions, I spent three hours teaching what happens to the dead. Courtney, maybe you can put a link. Uh, thank you, Rhonda Charles Connor. Maybe you can put a link, Sister Courtney, to that teaching, what happens to the dead, in the chat box. So to answer your question as briefly as possible, when you die, let me ask every one of you something. Have you ever been riding down the road or sitting in your house, and all of a sudden, a memory from your childhood comes back to you that you had completely forgotten? You, you had never, it just, it's like it just came out of nowhere your memory. I was doing that. I was raised by a foster mother. I was raised in the foster care system. And I lived in so many different homes. Lord, I could tell you some stories about that. But I was raised in those systems. And I have purposely suppressed a lot of my memories. I don't want some of those memories. Hands that touch you in the middle of the night. And there's nobody to tell because you're a child, you know, and um, so I've suppressed. But there are times when the most horrible things will pop to my mind that happened to me. That's why you never, ever let your children or grandchildren spend the night with anybody. Listen to what I'm telling you. If them people, if you don't know them better than you know yourself, you keep your children home, your grandchildren home. Things happen in the night season. All right, I don't know where all that came from, but just listen to what I'm telling you. Those memories will come back to my mind because they are recorded. Your mind, there are two parts, and this is all in my teaching, what happens to the dead. 
Every animal has a brain. But the only creatures that have a mind is humans. Connected to your brain, there is a spiritual essence called your mind. It's not your brain. Your mind is where your memories are stored. Your mind is your spirit. Now, if you've ever heard the teaching of body, soul, and spirit, that's a Roman Catholic lie. That's a Greek pagan lie. You are a soul. You don't have a soul. You are a soul with a spirit mind. That's why the Holy Spirit is the holy mind of Yahweh. <laughs> That's why the Holy Spirit was with him in the beginning. It's his mind. It's his thoughts. You have a mind where your life is recorded. Now, when you die, let's imagine at the resurrection that your body comes up without your mind. You wouldn't even know who you are. You would be mindless. When you die, the Bible says your spirit goes back to God. That is your memories. That is your mind. That is your recorded life. Some way, somehow, that spirit goes back to the Father. It is kept in some heavenly database. I don't understand. Okay? You get uploaded to the cloud some way, somehow, okay? And you know, you, it's funny, but if you'll read the science magazines, they're trying to do that right now. They're trying to freeze your body and retrieve your memories. And that way, when your body can come back, they can put your memories back. Well, they're trying to figure out what their father's already figured out. There's a way your memories are stored in heaven. When your body comes up in the resurrection, how do you think the Father's going to judge you at the judgment? By every what? Idle word. Where are those idle words stored? In your memories, in your mind. The Father has a way of seeing that mind, those memories, and anything before the bloodline. Hallelujah. He's going to have access to. Even he can't see them if it's before the bloodline of Yahshua. So sister, when you die, you can't be in that dreamlike state because your mind, your spirit leaves your body. When you're sleeping in the body, you still have your mind. When you go to bed at night, that's where your dreams are coming from, is your mind. Amen. Sister Jane England. Unmute yourself, darling. We love our sister Jane. I have a question for you when you were talking about how your body um, being corrupted and then when you die, it's no longer. Like if you, I, for instance, have chronic pain syndrome. So then when I die and I'm resurrected, does that mean in my new body, I no longer have that? You have no more corruption. Even Dr. Cole would tell you, if we all had our perfect bodies, there would be no, in other words, there's a corruption that sets in. There's something, the cells break down. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but right, right. your health is in your cells. That's why they call it cellular health. Right. If we all had cellular health, we probably wouldn't have a lot of this corruption. And that's why now doctors are trying to treat you on the cellular level. And there's another study of cells. Go study that. So no, ma'am, Sister Jane, when that body comes up, those dead cells, whatever the problem is, Hallelujah. They'll, they'll come up uncorrupted. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, why don't you reach out to Dr. Cole? Maybe he could help you with okay. some, some something. I, I know you live in pain. 
Brother Joseph, God bless you. Brother, Brother Shane, I, I just wanted to, you, you just said something a few moments ago about frequencies and, and then the DNA that is, uh, Yahweh's name is written on our DNA. I've been studying yes. that. Yes. And this is why, and I don't want to get off to a tangent, but this is why 5G is here. And this is why the RNA uh, vaccine is here to try to destroy what Yahweh's created in us and then to use frequencies to disturb us. So it, now it, that's right. Now that's right. Praise God. Praise God, brother. Thank you. Yes, Every sir. time I come here, you just, you just bring me to another level. I just want to praise God for your ministry and thank you for everything you're teaching. I hope people really are patient and listen and don't be so scared off because of the things that we've learned from our past. That's uh, right. From, thank you, brother from, Joseph. Thank God for right at 140 students here this morning. Yahweh bless you. And before we continue, I want to thank every one of you. Y'all know I never, ever, but I cannot not thank those of you that support us. You know who you are. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. We don't ever ask for anything, and we never will, unless it's a special project or something. But I just want to thank you all for your faithful support that keeps me where I can stay in the word, stay focused, and do what God's called me to do. Amen. God bless you. I see Dr. Cole. Go ahead. Hey, Pastor. Hey, Hello. great teaching. Um, uh, I just wanted to point out one book. I don't know if you've ever heard of this book before. Um, I know Josephus is not you know, a spiritually inspired writer. I um, love Josephus. Awesome. I like him, too, for the historical context. And he wrote a great discourse to the Greeks about Hades. I don't know if you've ever read it before. No. But he talked about all this in great detail about what happens really? when you die, about how the body's preserved in the earth about how the sound of God at the end is the signal you're talking about that brings our DNA back again. I've yeah. never heard anyone say that besides me. I will send but that to you. That, I wonder if we're done here. And he says, to, to, Jane, to Jane's question, he also talks about how the saved will be raised with incorruptible, never corrupted again bodies, but the unsaved are in their exact same bodies they died in, and they see that as they're going to enter into the lake of fire. They're in their, in their, in their literal corrupted body still. Um, wow. Wow. So, yeah, yes, awesome. I want the awesome link, read. please. Yeah, I'll send it to you when we're done here. Boy, that made my day, Dr. Cole. That made my day. Well, because... thank you for your teaching. It's amazing. Thank you, Dr. Cole, and thank you for your support. You're a faithful supporter of our ministry, and y'all don't know, just to know, you see the attack I'm under. You saw it this morning. It happens every day. You ought to see my emails. When I get a little ding on my phone or I get a mail, it just, and knowing that y'all are out there, I'm talking to all of you, it is a strong encouragement for, for us because let me explain it like this. I will never have a large church locally. And there's a reason for that because we are a Catholic town. There, it is a, we're right out of New Orleans. And the message I teach is not an easy message. So locally, in other words, our church will have to be global. It will have to be like it is now. Now, many of you are moving here and thank God for that because it encourages us so much. So I, what I'm telling all of you, when you, I don't care if it's one dollar, I don't have to be a dollar, just an I love you. When we get those messages, I see every one of them, and they just encourage me so much. Thank you. Paige House, God bless you this morning. Paige, unmute yourself, darling. There we go. Good morning. I, uh, Good morning. I, I hadn't heard you mention the other day that you had got the uh, book of Enoch, and I was wondering how you were in that. Yes. Hold on. I'll pull it out for you. I've got, um, and I want you guys to pray for me. My son and his wife are divorced and she just had their 10 year old daughter vaccinated without my son's permission. Oh no. Well, we definitely will sister. I'll add that to my list here. Um, by the way, if you're watching and you don't have the dream team, I promise before the almighty Yahweh, 
I make, I think I make $2 on Amazon. They, they rob us of our money, but I don't sell these. I don't make money. I'm so not in this for money. I don't need to sell anything. God's people takes care of me, but you need the book. So if I could give them away, I would, but they cost so much to print. I give all my other books away, but this one I can't quite afford to give away. But if you don't have it, it's on Amazon. Now, this book is uh, 200 pages of nothing but truth. And it's now listen, I'm going to tell all of you. <laughs> I've got Rosie on here. She's a school teacher. This book will drive you batty because I wrote it when I didn't have an editor. <laughs> I wrote this book in prison eight years ago. No, 10, no 11, 12 years ago. I'll do it for free. <laughs> I know, Rosie. She's offered to edit it for me free of charge. I've just got to find the original file. I, I, I'm going to have to find it. And then just uh, email it to me, you know. I won't change the content, just the... Sure. Everybody will thank you. Trust me. Everybody. <laughs> Y'all, I get emails every day. Oh, there's a misspelling. I guarantee you there is. I didn't. I couldn't afford an editor back then. Lord, we've come a long ways, but y'all need in, this book, okay? And in we the, will get corrected. Yes, ma'am. In the book of Enoch, it talked about um, the um, oh, were the the dome and the um, I forget the word I'm looking for. Yeah, that where they talk about the earth being flat and all this uh, and that. Yeah, yeah. So well, and that was confusing. No, it's um, it's it's all in how you read it. Anyway. I'm not going to go to flat earth stuff today, trust me. But, but, but the book of Enoch is wonderful. Now, there's only one of them I recommend, and I'll try to find it for you. I've got, Lord, I have books laying everywhere. Y'all, all I do is read night and day, study night and day. All right. So, Paige, I'm, I'm adding you to our prayer list for that beautiful grandbaby. Thank you. God bless you. Brother Agwan, I love you, brother. Good morning. Good morning, Pastor. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone, since we have uh, over 100 people here, and I'm pretty sure there's a lot of them that are new, uh, probably don't know, uh, a lot of our uh, Bible study teachings that you find, uh, you'll be able to access them on the website. Um, there is a website. I posted it on the, on the chat, so you can always go back to the very beginning of this Bible study uh, a lot of your questions that you may have today uh, will be answered in those uh, videos. So please uh, uh, go ahead and uh, have access to it. And this program will be uploaded into the website. Thank you, brother, for what you do, brother Christopher. You and uh, brother and sister Gobo, I appreciate y'all's work so very much. Um, there is one thing I'm going to answer one or two, and then we're going to, We've got about, we started at what, 10? We've got about 15 minutes left. I do want to touch on one more topic before, okay, that's all the questions. I, I want to answer a question that a lot of people are confused about. And um, it's about, let's go to Revelation 26, and I'm going to take 10 minutes and we'll be done. I'm cognizant of the time because I've still got to fly to McAllen, Texas today. Do you mean 22? Revelation 20 and verse 6. Oh, 20 and 6. Do you want me to start reading? When everybody gets there, Revelation 20 and 6. All right, let's do it. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. All if right, so, so blessed and holy are those that have part in the first resurrection. So here's what that verse is saying. There are two resurrections and very few will come up in the first resurrection. Now you've been taught all your life wrong. You've been taught that all saved people come up in the first resurrection. No, they don't. Only the tribes of Israel, now this can get confusing, only the 144,000, only the overcomers, 
only the bride of Christ. There's a difference in the body of Christ and the bride of Christ. How can that be? Adam had a body, but the bride was a choice part of the body. Jesus Christ has a body. It's called the church at large, all the saved people. But that's not the bride. The bride is a choice part of the body. Whenever Jesus Christ was killed on the Calvary, what did Yahweh do to Adam to get the bride? He put Adam to sleep. He killed him, basically. And while he was asleep, pierced his side and pulled out the bride. Yahshua, the second Adam, put him to sleep, pierced his side, and out comes the bride, blood and the water, because every child is born by blood and water. Okay? There are two groups of Christians, those that will be in the second resurrection and those that will be in the first. You have to decide what kind of Christian you're going to be. If you'll listen to my naysayers, they will tell you, you just need to have faith in Christ. Accept him as your personal savior. And here's your get into heaven ticket. That second resurrection stuff. If you want that, go for it. But there is a group of people that is being called in this hour. You need to go watch my teaching on the two witnesses. There's a two witness company that is being resurrected in the hour before the seventh angel. That group is striving for perfection. Oh, Brother Vaughn, my preacher said, can't be perfect. That's because he don't know what the word perfect means. It means mature. How are you going to tell your children they can't be mature? Well, that's okay. Don't, don't, don't wipe yourself when you go to the bathroom. Can't nobody be perfect. You better mature that child. God wants you matured. He's tired of you playing around at Mount Calvary. He wants you to get over to Mount Zion. Woo! You need to, if what I just said don't make sense, go read my free ebook called The Overcomers. It's on my website. Courtney, get him a link. The Overcomers. Download it free of charge. About 20 pages. God's tired of you hanging around Mount Calvary. You stop at Mount Calvary. And then you go to Mount Zion, which is the first resurrection. Let's keep reading. Hold on. Woo, I feel like preaching now. All right. So let me ask you this. Anyone that comes up in the second resurrection, they must be the opposite of blessed and holy. Because Blessed and holy is he that comes up in the first resurrection. Let me show you about that first resurrection. Hold on. Let me look up a scripture that just came to my spirit mind. Blessed and holy. Okay. Philippians 3.13. I want to read to you what Paul says about this first resurrection. Let's start at verse number uh, 10. Philippians 3, 10 through, thir through 14. No, through 15. My Lord, read the, the whole chapter is good. Okay, just start at 10 and I'll tell you when to stop. That I may know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death. That's if funny. How many people wants to know him in the fellowship of his suffering? Anyway, go ahead. If by any means I might attain to the resurrection out from among the dead. Now, hold on. Now, Paul, all you've got to do to come up in the resurrection is to be saved. But yet he says, if I plan to come up in a certain resurrection, 
I must love the fellowship of his suffering. Because from the fellowship of his suffering, I might obtain the resurrection. Read. Not as though I have already attained, nor were already perfect, but I keep on pursuing after it, that I may take hold of that for which Yeshua Messiah has also taken hold of me. Listen carefully what he says here. He said, I don't even know if I'm going to qualify for the resurrection for the blessed and the holy, those that have learned to love the fellowship of his suffering. He said, those that are striving for what? Perfection, maturity. If you are satisfied with being saved, you will never qualify for this resurrection. You're not blessed and you're not holy. You're just saved. Learn the difference. Paul said, I am striving for perfection. I know my pastor told me I can't be perfect, but I'm, I'm still striving. See, Paul I tell you what, I don't know what Bible these people are reading out of. I don't know what virgin they're reading out of. I don't understand. When I read that Bible, Paul just said, I've got to learn to suffer. I've got to learn to be matured that I might make that resurrection of the blessed and the holy. And Revelation said there's only one resurrection that is blessed and holy. And that's the first one. Read. Brothers, I do not consider myself as having yet taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind in reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press on toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of Yahweh in Yeshua Messiah. Hold on, there's two callings. You have a salvation calling, and then you have a high calling. If you're in this class today, you've heard the high call. The call to maturity, the call to the government. And Paul says here, brethren, I don't even know if I have apprehended what it's going to take to make that first resurrection. But he said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to forget everything I've ever been taught. I'm going to forget everything behind me, my rebellion, and I am going to press every day of my life into that maturity. If I, if I mess up, I'm going to fall on my knees and repent quickly and keep pressing. I'm never going to turn around. There's no reverse in an overcomer. There's no backup in an overcomer. No matter what the enemy brings my way, no matter how much my body's in pain, no matter how much the enemy comes to my mind, I'm going to press every day, not just today, not on days when I'm feeling good, but I'm going to press through the, 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 the debauchery of the mind. I'm going to press through the, 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 the pain and the suffering. I'm going to learn to love it that I might be counted worthy of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus. I'm pressing toward the mark. I want the prize. What is the prize? Not salvation. Salvation is free. You earn a prize. See, that's the problem people have with my teaching. They think we're telling people they've got to do works to be saved. No, salvation is free. You got to do works to get the prize. So, whoa, what is the prize? It's not heaven. My, let me just stop because I feel I'm about to scare some folks the way I'm going on. Lord, help me, Jesus. My, my, my. I'm going to tell you, if this don't excite you, you ain't got no excite in you. Uh, if the word don't turn you on more than a woman or a man can, then you ain't spirit, honey. You light, you death. Good morning, Roman. I see you out there for the first time. God bless you today. Roman, are you the one that sends me those little things in the mail? My God, sir, you'll never know what you have done for our ministry. In the moments when, anyway, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm almost going to cry because I'll never forget one day. We had a desperate need here and I walked to the mailbox. 
Matter of fact, I told the told this church this story. We were trying to move one of those buildings, and I walked to the mailbox, and I had dropped your letter on the floor of the post office. And I had a stack of mail, and I was going through it, praying over the needs. And I started to walk off, Roman. And when I did, that letter was at my foot. And when I reached down and picked it up, there was such a kind gift in there, and it was it was right in the nick of time. Thank you, sir, is all I can tell you from the bottom of my heart. Please don't anybody think, I'm not giving, I just, I have to say thank you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to Yahweh. Woo. All right. Now, let's, let's, let me close this out. Let's go to, uh, go ahead. I wanted to ask Roman, is that a baby he's holding? <laughs> In today's world, it might be a puppy. <laughs> yes, it is a baby. Is a boy Aww. or a girl? It's a girl. And how Aww. old is she? Uh, two months. <gasps> Look how beautiful. Well, Roman, I make baby blankets, and I want to send you one. Oh, thank you. I mean, oh. they are gorgeous. They thank are. You. It's my ministry. It's called Stitched in a Prayer. And um, I don't know how to get your address. Maybe you can... Share it with uh, Courtney. I'll send you a private message, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm Rosie yeah. on Hi, the Rosie. Telegram. Okay, you, thank you. You can trust Rosie. She's one of the good ones. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank Pastor, you, Roman. Before you end, I want to also pray for you before you go to McAllen. Thank you. Okay. You let's are, do that. Remind remind me before we go to, to let's pray that. Amen. Okay. Um, I um, Only God knows. All right, let's close out. Um, my Lord, I just want to keep reading that chapter. Y'all need to study that chapter. Y'all need to read that chapter. So let me just close out with some more evidence and proof of these two resurrections. Let's go over to um, John chapter 5, 28 and 29. St. John 5, 28 and 29. And with this verse, I want to prove to you that Christians are coming up in the second resurrection, not the first. There is a huge difference in a Christian and an overcomer. And all the promises in the book of Revelation are only given to whom? The overcomers. He that overcometh. Not he that gets saved, but he that overcometh. Let's read John 5, 28 and 29. Do not be astonished at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and will come forth. And those who have practiced righteousness will be resurrected to live. And those who have practiced wickedness will be resurrected to be damned. How many groups of people do you have in this general resurrection? Two. Two. You have the saved and the lost. You have the wicked and the church folk. Notice who's not in this second resurrection. The overcomers. Why? They came up in the first resurrection to govern with Yahshua during the millennial reign. All the other Christians come up with the sinners. Think about it. In the second resurrection, some that went to church, they practiced righteous deeds. They gave their tithe. They, they, they love the Lord. You know, they're coming up with the sinners and they will receive eternal life. They just won't receive the prize. The prize is not eternal life. Eternal life is free. The prize is the race that you ran for the high calling. I hope you get this. All of our life we were taught eternal life is the prize. You only earn a prize. I thought you didn't have to earn eternal life. The prize is the first resurrection. Government with Yahshua. Now after the millennial reign, the great white throne judgment will be set up. Then we go into the next age 
which is called the new heaven and the new earth. I'll teach you on that, what that's going to be like in future lessons. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, I pray that not a moment of your time was wasted here today. I pray that the word of Yahweh has opened up for you. And I pray that I've helped clear up any confusion. And more importantly, I pray that I've planted a seed within you to desire the high calling of God. Why do we keep the Sabbath day? You think it's to be saved? Lord, no. It's to be found worthy and walking in obedience of the high calling of Yahweh. Salvation is free. You don't earn salvation, but you're going to earn the first resurrection. Amen. Eric, go ahead, brother. I, I, I want to tell you something. Um, well, first off, I sent you a package about two weeks ago. Did you receive it? Uh, Brother Eric, uh, have I been to the post office in two weeks? I like to let it pile up. So when I go, I got a whole bunch of stuff to go. Oh, through well, it's, it's a box. There's some goodies in it. So don't oh, let I it love sit goodies. What kind of goodies? Hold on. Maybe I did get them. Well, well, because since uh, because of you, it's all your fault. Just I've invite me. To, it, it, okay. Well, was it food? Uh, it's food. It's food. Oh. Well, I should know if I got food. But don't ever think that you've wasted our time. Okay? Thank you, brother. If somebody brother. thinks they wasted their time, they can leave. They're, they're just another troll. <laughs> if, if you have any experience in, in command, in, in hierarchy, the higher up the ladder you go, the lonelier it gets. Okay. Okay. That makes so sense. One, one of the things that I want to convey to you is don't ever think. I want to make sure that you feel that you have support. Don't ever think that you have wasted our time. Okay. Thank you. You are high up the ladder. You are high up the hierarchy. So I know for you, speaking on a certain level of experience, that it's lonelier the higher up the food chain you go. Don't ever think that you have wasted our time. Okay. Thank you. We sir. look to you as our teacher. You give us information. Amen. And I know that, like I said, I've been there. It is lonely at the top. And I never even made it to the top. But I do know from experience that the higher up the ladder you go, the lonelier it gets. And I don't ever want you to feel lonely. Thank you, Brother Eric. You, you, that means the world to me. Thank you from the bottom of my so, heart. And, it, and it's charcuterie. I've always had a thing for charcuterie, but since I. Oh, I do have it. Yes, court, I got it. I did get so, that. It's it's so, like beef jerky. Yeah, well, give me a rundown. I, I sent oh, some to somebody I've else. Already eat, I, I I've already it. eaten all the beef jerky. But I was I was scared of the other because I'd never heard of it. It's in my refrigerator. <laughs> Which one? Well, I send you another one because I've been practicing, but I've removed all the pork. Oh, There's that's no see, I thought it was it looked like maybe pastrami, and I knew that had pork in it. I think. Oh, uh, right. No, that's all. That's that's a. Uh, it's either hundred percent beef okay. or a beef turkey blend. Okay. I've, been, I've been playing because you're right. You, it's difficult to find the stuff that we like to eat yes. without, without pork. Yes. So um, if you like oh, I it, did get that. I, yes. I need a review to tell me what you think. Yes. Because I, I, I sent Audie and Karina as well. Oh, so. wow. I love that. The jerky's gone. And then I, I'll try the other and I'll give you a report. Thank you, that, that's, that's dental floss creator there. Okay, good to know. God Thank bless you. you. Thank you, Eric. I love you, brother. Thank Joshua you. Feliciano. Good morning. Unmute yourself, brother Joshua. Good morning. Uh, good morning, thanks, brother Vaughn. 
Uh, we're calling from Chicago, or we're we're logging in from Chicago, and we just uh, want to thank you for your teachings that you've uh, really helped us through YouTube, and uh, you've actually helped my mother-in-law with the vaccine letter to Wonderful. keep her job. And uh, you know, we I'm we we're Pentecostals. So I come from a family. My dad was a pastor. My brother's a pastor. Yes, and, sir. Um, I've been. Uh, knowing about the holidays since I was about 13 years old and nobody ever listened to me. <laughs> so I know okay. what it is to, I felt alone most of my life until I started listening to your teachings. Wow. And it's really helped us as a family. We're starting to keep the Sabbath and we're keeping the, the holy days. Awesome. And we're looking to get out of Chicago. So we want okay. for you guys to pray for us, to help us, uh, you know, so that the, the Holy Spirit could guide us where we should move to. We're looking at Florida and we're looking at some other Oh, areas. forget Florida. Forget that. Mississippi is the most beautiful <laughs> state in the <laughs> Union. Oh, we have the best food, the best music, the best everything. And yeah. we're, a red, we're a red state. We're still red. Y'all come on yeah. down here. <laughs> we would yeah. love to have you. Oh, yeah. And uh, so we're looking to go down there to uh, my mother-in-law, myself and, and my wife, even though I'm baptized, but I was baptized under the Trinity. Sure, sure, which sure. I want to be baptized the right way. And my we're going to be baptizing you know, everyone Passover night. OK, so we're, we're trying to plan that right now. You have a beautiful family that. behind you there, brother. That's beautiful. You're a blessed man. Thank what you. Bran what branch of Pentecostalism, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, we, my father was an independent because, you know, the, okay. the Holy Spirit had told him to get out of the, the major yes. church uh, Council. okay. councils or assemblies. And so he, you know, my father was, he, he was Holy Spirit filled, but he didn't fully understand the, the scriptures. Right. For, they, they thought that chapter six of Genesis was talking about the sons of Seth and not understanding about the Nephilim or anything right. like that. A lot of so people that, believe that. Somebody in the chat's telling you to move to Florida that said y'all can start a home fellowship down there. Let me tell you something. Y'all leave. I'm I'm pulling him to Mississippi now. Y'all leave him alone now. <laughs> <laughs> we would love that. I mean, we, we're, oh, we've been praying. Well, the for, Lord will for make a way family. right now. I ask the Lord right now to open doors for you supernaturally and for everything that's not supposed to be there to close and for God to guide you and for the Lord to send angels to direct your path. I believe that for you right now, brother. Thank you. And y'all try to come for Passover and we would love to baptize you. It's such a beautiful <laughs> night. There's no light, no night like Passover night. People are coming from everywhere. Um, Everyone wears white on that night. It's such a beautiful night. All the sisters wear white and all the brothers wear a touch of red. It is one of the most beautiful nights of the year. Amen. And can you, I just brother. add to Joshua, we have one room left with two beds um, yes. in our Airbnb. So if you need a room, you can reach out to me. If they want um, to come, let them come at no charge, Courtney. I'll take care of it. Okay, you can reach out to me. <laughs> So how can okay. we do that through the website, through the First Harvest website? or No, reach out to Courtney right now. Courtney, y'all connect, okay. okay? I'll send you my um, information in the chat. Okay, Courtney is my, uno my unofficial unpaid secretary. <laughs> thank you, Courtney. God bless you. Brother Brian, I'm going to take a chance on you. I've never seen you before. Unmute yourself. Courtney, be on standby. Yes, Lord, Pastor Vaughn, how you doing? Praise the Lord. How are you? Where are you from? Uh, uh, Oklahoma. Quinn's my buddy. He's the one that introduced me. Oh! Oklahoma, and I have not been able to stop. I haven't been able to get enough. I bought your books. I've got them all downloaded <laughs> on my iPad. I mean, I'm taking notes. I can't stop watching your videos. I'm preaching to everybody. i got my books. <laughs> I mean, I'm following along. I mean, I mean. My buddy Quinn were like, "What? I mean, I'm up with the Sabbaths and the holidays and everything like that. I mean, I'm like a like a desert that is hungry for this stuff. I was raised UPCI, and I'm like, what's going on with y'all? Why can't you see this? This Sabbath stuff right? means something. Holidays, it means something. Why are you? Why don't we even hang? You know, I mean, it goes on and on and on and stuff like that. But what I did realize in prayer today, I do realize is that you know what? Just like God called me and called you and called everybody to sit right here with us." That he's going to open their understanding in, in his time. 
And he just told me that's that true. He, Brother Brian, so, are you, do you live there close by Brother Brother Quentin? One hundred miles from me now. But okay, one, well maybe y'all could start a Sabbath study together. Um, uh, yeah, we're 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 real close. Okay, now let me explain from what you just said. Everybody that watches my sermon from last night on the two witnesses, when you get to the end, when I start talking about the earthquake, it will answer that question you just asked about other people, you know, from our background not seeing this message. So try to watch that when it'll be uploaded on Rumble in about an hour from now. Okay. Okay. But Brother Brian, appreciate so <laughs> glad to have you with us and try to get down and see us as soon as you can. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yahweh bless you, brother. Sister Renee from Virginia. Unmute yourself, Sister Renee. Esther. Hello, darling. Hi. Um, I don't see myself being able to visit Mississippi okay. to keep the feasts, okay. any of them, anytime soon. Yes, ma'am. I have a Messianic Jewish community, a church nearby that I have attended. I know that they keep the different, or they keep That's that fine. Jewish calendar. That's fine. If I attend their celebrations mm -hmm. am i meeting the requirements yes ma'am yes, ma here's the deal um here's the deal at the end of the day sister renee the father judges the intent of our heart and that is that that is the truth for example there's many people that have kept the wrong Sabbath day all their life. But they thought they were keeping the Sabbath day. The Bible says to him, to the servant that knew it to do good and did it not, he will receive a lot of stripes or a lot of judgment from the Lord. But for those that didn't know, fewer stripes. So what I'm telling you is until you can find a more perfect way you attend the feast of Yahweh as close as you can get to it. And the father will see that intent of your heart. Thank you. And what a beautiful picture of such an elegant lady. Where do you live, sister? Oh, in Virginia, where at? Uh, just up. Uh about 30 minutes from Jane England. I'm in Kelowna oh, wow. Hot. She's in Disputana. Well, my word. I preach a lot of times just outside of Richmond in a little town called Ashland, Virginia. Oh, my God. I, I, I just keep waiting to hear that you're close enough that I can get Ex there. Well, we will announce it uh, real soon. And uh, thank you for being with us. We'll be praying for you. And uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Brother Keith, go right ahead. Hi, Pastor. It's Keith and Laura Marin. We just want to ask, uh, thank you so much for your teachings. You have blessed us so much. This has been an incredible journey the Lord has been bringing us on. But we, we want to ask you for prayer today. We're both suffering with COVID. Okay. It's just so it just doesn't want to let go. And Laura's really suffering with some terrible, terrible body aches and pains. And uh, yes, sir. They say it's mild. <laughs> sure. Well, I, I had it. I, I had it for three weeks. So I do understand. And so right now I'm going to pray for both of you. Father, I send the word of life to these precious people. I speak the word of life you said in your word that if we walk in covenant with you, that we could speak to a mountain and it would be removed. This mountain of COVID, yes, you was not successful in our church, in our local church where you attacked every one of us. You were not successful. And Father, right now we pray that this will not be successful 
against these precious believers. I speak the word of life for healing to come into their bodies and for this germ, this disease, this virus, this spirit of death to loose its hold on them in the mighty name of Yahshua. And I pray it over everyone listening right now that is sick in their bodies. Over everyone that's struggling with this sickness, let this word of life permeate into your mind and may it build your faith and I curse in the name of Yahshua every demon spirit mm -hmm. that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and how great God is. He is a healer. We know he's a healer and we call on our heavenly father to heal his sick children. We thank you, Father, in the name of Yahshua. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. We will see you at Passover. We got Yay! the first Airbnb. We're excited. Thank you. Oh, that is wonderful. Can't wait to see you guys. You as brother well. Rod, what time is it in Australia, Brother Rod? Uh, must be getting close to four o'clock in the morning there. <laughs> Um, yes, what I, wanted to, what I wanted to just clarify, so it's 144,000 in the first resurrection and all others thereafter. Yes, that's correct. Now, by the way, if anyone needs further explanation on my YouTube channel or my Rumble channel, there's a teaching there on the 144,000. Uh, it was way back from eight years ago, but it's there. Just type in Shane Vaughn, 144,000. There's two parts to that. Sister Kelly Robinson. Unmute yourself, darling. There you go. Hello. Um, I'm kind of embarrassed to ask this. Forgive me. But, Don't you uh, dare be. First question. I would not be able to, under any circumstances, with what I have going on currently, um, be able to come the entire time for the Sabbath. But I am more than willing, if I have to drive all day and all night um, on Monday, to be there on Tuesday and yes. stay the whole day and evening and then leave to drive back home. Would that be okay? That is, well, sure yeah, that is well. That is perfectly fine. The main service is that Tuesday night, Passover night. Now, the next night is a commanded holy day. If there's any way you could pull it off, if not, then the Lord understands you do the best you can. But the next night is the first night of unleavened bread. So it, you come and do what you can, okay? And uh, God will bless you for it. And we would love to see you. And Kelly, don't drive all night. Inbox me. And let's see if we can't help you with some funds for maybe an airplane ticket, darling. Okay. Um, my second okay. question for you, uh, this one's really hard. I, I feel kind of foolish, actually. I have, um, I've, I've followed your teaching as close as I can, doing as much research as I can. And um, as far as the unclean foods. Uh-huh. Boy, given First of all, may, so let me far. correct let me correct your your terminology. Oh, I'm sorry, and I'm doing this for everybody. There's no such thing as unclean food. There's okay. unclean animals. Okay. Unclean now I'm, animals. I'm not being. I'm just. There's a purpose for me saying that because when you get in the New Testament, there's one little scripture that if you don't know what I just told you, it can throw a caveat in it all. So. There's no unclean food. There's unclean animals. Okay. So I've given up all of the unclean animals, as hard as it is. Yes, ma'am. But uh, I had cancer back in 2015, thyroid okay. cancer, and I lost my complete thyroid. So I have to be on that medicine for the rest of my life okay. every single day. Yes, ma'am. Fortunately, they have pulled... And I didn't realize this. They, they pulled a lot of the medications that are bovine, if okay. you will. I know all about it. So they've got me on porcine. Okay. I understand all of that. Let's do this. I'm very careful when it comes to medical advice. Uh, I don't want to put myself in any kind of uh, litigious situation. So if you will email me, I will give you 
I've given advice to others about this. I will give you my advice spiritually, but not medically. Uh, so send me an email and, and I'll respond to it. Put in the subject line uh, from the Bible study. That way I'll open your email. Okay. Thank you okay. so much. Bless you. Brother Alvin Beal. There. Hey, Pastor, I, I, I want to say thank you for all that you do. Um, but I really wanted to draw attention, if you don't mind, to Courtney. Yes. And I want to reach out to Courtney and just say thank you for her yes. hard work today and all that she does. For those of us that are so far away, we truly appreciate all of your efforts. Thank you very much. God bless you. That was so kind and thoughtful, Brother Bill. Courtney is a treasure among us. She's moving here. Y'all pray her house to sell. She's moving here to be my secretary. I've not officially offered her the job, but anyway, but <laughs> God's sending her here, and we're so thankful for that. Um, amen. God bless you. Brother Roman Maretsky. Mar is that right? <laughs> I need yeah. To it, it is right, uh, Pastor Vaughn. Uh, thank you so much for for your teachings and for what you do. Uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I just wanted to. Um, I have a request, a prayer request for my wife. Uh, she has not been feeling well for for a number of months, ever since she had COVID, and she had uh, different uh, bacterial infections and stuff that she's taking antibiotics for right now. So basically, we're just asking for prayer, uh, okay. so she uh, for healing uh, and recovery. What um, is she there now, where she can hear my voice? Yes, she she can okay. hear you. Yes. All right. What is her name? Irina. At Irina. No. Where Irina. are y'all? Irene. Where are y'all from? We are from Ukraine. You. Oh wow! I, did you hear my teaching on Ukraine or no? I don't think so. Okay, because I'd love to have gotten your feedback on it. I just did a a huge uh, Professor Toto show uh, about the Ukraine. Uh, so do you have family there? What's the situation? Uh, well, we have family on my wife's side there. Okay, okay. Uh, in Western Ukraine. How are they feeling about the situation? Well, the kids, not so well. The adults are more hopeful. Um, okay. But it seems like things are at the moment, at least, kind of calm right now. Right. Maybe the calm before the storm, but we're definitely going to keep your family in prayer over there. Let's pray for Irene right now. Amen. Karen, my wife's in here. She, God raised my wife from the dead. She's a prayer warrior. Father, right now, we just join together and we pray for Irene. Lord, you know her body. You created that body. And Lord, you said in your word, that we could speak the word of life and it would bring life. Father, we ask you, we petition you to touch our sister's body. Whatever this is that's wrong, you know right where it's at. You know the exact cell. You know everything about her. We ask you to heal her body from the top of her head to the sole of her foot. Heal her body and restore her youth, restore her strength, restore her mind, restore her joy of living, restore it now. Let the angels of Yahweh bring and pour over her the oil of gladness, the oil of healing. May it be her portion today. In the name of Yahshua, you said in your word, if you believe when you pray, I will hear your prayer. Father, we believe right now. In the mighty name of Yahshua, amen. Amen. And we'll continue to pray for Irene. Amen. Thank you, Roman. God bless you, everyone. Well, we're going to, uh, let me just say a few things before I go. Many of you, I want to thank you. You have, uh, many of you have joined the, the Patriots Buying Club. Many of you have helped us and joined the Gold and Silver Club. Many of you have sent love offerings. Please thank, accept my thanks from the bottom of my heart. My wife and I, she's standing here, but she's not coming on camera. We thank you for your love, for your support. It means the world to us. Now, um, I am uh, preparing 
for tomorrow night sermon. I'm going to finish up the two witnesses. It'll be part three tomorrow night. I'll be back here in my local church. So uh, we covet your prayers. Sister Rosie, you wanted to pray, I believe, before we leave today. Did Rosie leave us? I got it. I was just waiting for uh, Courtney to unmute me again. Yes, okay. I want to pray for you before you go to McAllen. Thank you, Father. Um, I, people, no one knows about me, but I just retired from a job, uh, inner city um, alternative school with the toughest, toughest kids. I was there 20 years, and my prayers have released literally students from prison. Wow. And um, these were the toughest of kids that the kids that crashed in the beginning of this zoom were the kind of kids I taught I was you know I was ready to get out into my little rap language there for a second but I want to pray because I understand where you're going and what's going to happen uh, so father I lift to you yes Pastor Lord Ron, in his entourage and I pray that his entourage does not distract him from his mission to go up against this cartel which is very active in McAllen, and I pray that Father Pastor Vaughn keeps his eyes on you, Yahweh. Yes, Father. Not on the circumstances, that it's the power of you in your presence that is going to defeat anything and keep Pastor Vaughn safe. Father, I, I, I just want Pastor Vaughn to know the seriousness of this in the responsibility that you're giving him and to know that he will come out victorious because of you, you're victorious, and that you are working through him and to not take this lightly, to stay in prayer, and that I know what he's coming up against and that I've come out unscathed in these 20 years and that he will come out unscathed but the main thing is to focus on you yes. and to stay in prayer in yes. Yeshua's name amen amen Rose I felt that darling I'm believing God for his will to be done I'm still uh sitting here waiting on the voice of the Lord concerning McAllen and um so please continue to pray for me Karen Bring me that uh, gold bill that we got yesterday, sweetheart, if you don't mind. I want to show y'all something. Uh, and I want to encourage all of you. Pat, are you still on the line with us? Sister Pat, call. Pat, call. Did I lose you? No, I'm here. I had to get unmuted. Okay. Sister Pat, take a moment. A lot of people are new here. They don't know about uh, what you do for this ministry, the Patriots Buying Club. Let them know how to get a hold of you or uh, if they want to quit shopping at Walmart and they want to get product. Just talk a little bit and tell them what all we do for, for people. Sure. Um, yes, I, I'd appreciate it if you guys would jump on because we can move our money away from the left. And we can, and the and it, money does trickle down into this ministry. It helps, it's going to help feed our um, yes. Home of Hope guys, turn their electricity on, all of that. Yes. And um, we're giving our dollar to a patriot. So the way you can contact us, there's several of us on here that share. Um, I could, if you contact me, um, you'll see me on Telegram. I will divvy it out to the people that are sharing um, Melaleuca with everyone. I'm getting healthier just by changing to this brand. They're non-toxic, high-end quality products. Just changing your supplements to this company will change your life. I promise you. I'm not a saleswoman, but I can try yep. to back my pastor up. And they, they send us about 10% to the church every month of all your purchases. So it's really a great help to us. So if you can help them get with Sister Pat and she'll get you all hooked up. and um, Thank you. We've, we've taken about a million dollars right at it away from Walmart since we started. And so it's been a blessing. Also, I got this in the mail yesterday. I wanted to show everybody. Uh, this is a solid gold $2 bill. I get these every month. I get silver and gold. But this is uh, 
There's Her Majesty on the back. But that is a $2 bill, 24 karat fine gold. Now, the interesting thing about this $2 bill is it cost about $130. I, I give up my fake dollars for gold. And anyway, long story short, that $2 bill, I'm going to show you what inflation does, will still buy about 204, uh, no, about $150 worth of product. That's what inflation, that's what inflation looks like. So um, we appreciate all of you that have joined us. You can go to godsmoney.info, schedule an appointment with us, and we'll call you and get you hooked up. You can buy it with no markup directly from the mint. You can get, I didn't pay a penny markup on this gold. So I take all my savings account and I get gold and silver and that way I protect against inflation. Well, Passover is coming up soon. Now listen, one other thing, you guys, we have a church vacation coming up April the 16th through the 20th in the Great Smoky Mountains. You're welcome to come and join us if you need a vacation after Passover. Uh, you can meet us up there and uh, we could all, we could spend time. We're going to Go to the Dixie Stampede in Dollywood and this National Park. We're going to go tubing and whitewater rafting and all of that good stuff. So it's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Well, I love you, folks. Oh, Sister Anu had her hand up. Go ahead, darling. Yeah, just, just really, really, really quickly. Um, can you tell Karen, your wife, that I sent her a message on Facebook, a private message? I sure will. Now, when people send private messages, if we're not friends, sometimes we don't see it. So I'll let her know that, okay? All right, if you're watching and you've not joined our Telegram channel or our Rumble channel, you're missing out. And go watch The Two Witnesses Part 2 in about an hour. Now go eat your lunch. Shabbat hey, shalom, everybody. Let's unmute them all, Sister Courtney. All right, Callie has a question, love. Pastor. Huh? Callie has a question too. Oh, Callie, go ahead, Callie. Oh, I didn't see you. Callie, I'm no, yourself. It's real quick um, because you were talking about open and I'm unmuted now. Can you hear me? Can you yeah. hear me? Okay. Um, you were talking about the gold thing. We are we do the gold and silver, but I was looking in there to get the um, President Trump's coin, but it's not there. Yeah. I Okay, we've got Trump coins. Now, let me tell can I tell y'all something? I looked on eBay last night and I showed Pat that Trump coin, they're selling one for $10,000, the same one I've got on eBay. And I paid $250 for them. Now, they're not quite $250 anymore. They keep rising, but we can get them for you. If you're part of the gold and silver, we're the only one that has real Donald Trump money, real money. So, Callie, get a hold of Kim Wiley. Do you know Kim? Yes. Or, okay, they'll take care of it, okay? Um, She'll show you how to get those coins. Okay, thank you. We love you with the love of the Lord. Unmute everybody. I want to hear everybody. Shabbat shalom. 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 Shabbat shalom.